There is no other God. There's only one creative God. There's only one Savior, Jesus Christ. That's it. There's no other God. There's no other way to get to God except through Jesus Christ. Except through Jesus Christ, God made a way for us to be with Him. Do you know Jesus? And more importantly, does Jesus know you? Amen. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is coming back. And He's going to judge the world in truth and righteousness. God loves each and every single one of you so much. A lot of you are saying, how does God love me? How do I know God loves me? God loves each and every single one of you because He sent His Son, Jesus. We must repent for our sins, Australia, and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died for you. While you were yet still a sinner, God showed His love for you. While you were yet still a sinner, God died for each and every single one of you. If I were to be loving to you, then I would tell you the truth. The truth is, if you don't know Jesus, the only place that awaits you is the condemnation of God. If you don't know Jesus, the only thing that awaits you is the lake of fire. You see, the Bible says that we are born in sin. We were conceived in sin. Our society, as scripture says, drinks down iniquity like it is water. In Psalm 51, the psalmist says that in sin my mother conceived me. Having us left to the slaughter for our sin, Jesus Christ died for us. Where are you going to go? A lot of us are mocking God. Where are we going to go? God is not mocked. Everything we do, we're going to give an account for God. If we mock God, we're going to give an account for every single thing. What we sow, we shall reap. The Bible says that we are born in sin. That every single day we sin and we feel no sorry. We feel no remorse when we do sin. See, what the Bible says is very simple. We have all sinned. In Romans 3, 23, Paul says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right, in Romans 3, 10, the Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. There's only one name under heaven given amongst men by which you must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. You sin every single day, and if you deny that, then you've committed another sin. You have lied again. The Bible says that we sin every single day, that we love sin. That we are unable to save ourselves and we don't even want to save ourselves. That's how far we have gone. And that if God is love, if God is love, then He has to be just. Now if God is just, then it logically follows that He has to punish sinners. The Bible says that we are sinners. We deserve condemnation. But God, in His love, satisfied His justice by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and condemned under our judgment. My friends, do you not see the love in God? Ask Him to forgive you for the things that you have done and He will give you hope in time of need. He will give you strength to overcome the struggles and the hurdles and the weight of sin, the burdens in your soul. Jesus has come so that we will have life and life more abundantly. We're broken and stop up, but we don't, we don't smile. Our smiles are fake, our laughter is fake. We have no joy, we have no peace, we have no hope. But Jesus Christ came to give each and every single one of you guys hope. What is love? Love is laying down your life for your friend. That's what Jesus did. Now if you go to hell, if you do not repent and you die right now, and that's where you would end up. Now if you go to hell, it is not because of God's fault. It is because you chose to. Wrong has become right and right has become wrong. We must face these societal issues from a biblical standpoint. We must fall on our knees, humble ourselves in the sight of God, and He will lift us up. The Bible says that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. The Bible is very clear. We all know that God exists. Some of you atheists out there might be saying, hey, prove to me that God exists. I don't need to prove to you that God exists, my friend. The Bible says that we know that God exists, but we suppress the truth in unrighteousness because we love our sin. Hey, brother. Why would you not want forgiveness when He offers it to you? God died for you. He offers you forgiveness. It's free gift. You don't have to work to get to heaven. You don't have to work to get to God. You don't have to do good things to get to God. He already died for you. He already paid the price for you. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. 
so that you can have a free gift. But the same love that allows God to send us to hell is that very same love that also allows God to send His Son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and condemned under our judgment. Jesus took the fine. You are not righteous, but Jesus was righteous for you. Christ was holy for you. You are not holy. You are depraved beyond measure. And I tell you this because I love you and I care for you. That you are depraved beyond measure. That you, like me, need a savior. And that savior came 2,000 years ago in the name of Jesus. He died on the cross. He was condemned under our judgment. He God. died in the place that we deserve. God sent His only Son for each and every single one of you. He died for your sins so that you may spend eternity with Him. So that you may live with Him. So that you may know His love. So that you may know His mercy. So that you may have His joy. So that you may have His peace. So that you may be liberated. Be free. His name is Christ Jesus. And He can take you from bondage and bring you into liberty in the Spirit of God. God is light and in Him there is no darkness. We have to turn from debauchery and sexual immorality. We have to turn from the sinful passions and pleasures of this life so that we might once again be led by a righteous and holy God. I'm not telling you to accept Jesus into your heart. I'm telling you to accept Jesus that He would change your heart. Make your heart into a heart of flesh. He would change your heart. Put His fear into your heart that you would obey His commandments. Accept Jesus, repent, feel sorry for your sins, and turn from the sins thereof, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to trust in His works. Don't trust in yourself. Get on your knees and say, Lord, I am sorry. I am unable to save myself. You save me. Save me, Lord. That is the only way to eternal life. The Bible says that unless a man be born again, he cannot inherit eternal life. But the Bible says in Isaiah twice that there is no peace for the wicked, this seems harsh, but without Christ, I am a very bad person. Without Jesus, I am not a good person. But when Christ lives through us, He can give us joy unspeakable and peace which surpasses all understanding. He can show us a way through this life where we can have purpose and fulfillment. And He changes us, He transforms us by putting His Spirit inside of us and giving us new life. Where would you spend eternity? This life is so small. Our love is but a vapor, the Bible says. But our soul is for eternity. You guys have been given a chance by God to spend eternity with Him. Find life and life everlasting through the free gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, that He sacrificed Himself on a cross. He was raised from the dead on the third day. He's alive. He's coming back. And He will one day judge the world. And I don't want that for you. We will stand before the throne of God one day and account for the sins that we have done. But your sins can be forgiven and paid for by the blood of Jesus. God showed His love, showed His grace, poured out for you on the cross. On the cross He sent His only begotten Son, His only begotten Son to bear your sin, to bear your shame, to bear your guilt, to bear your burden. God sent Jesus Christ to die for you. God does not desire for anyone to perish. It says it's not the Father's will that any one of these little ones should perish. God says it's a good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And it takes no delight in our destruction. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This man right here is a preacher. You want know to say anything about yourself? Vietnamese Australian with an American accent. I thank God for all that He's given me. <laughs> this, this, is, this is not what I'm doing. This is, this is the Spirit's work. Uh, it is not me who does it. It is the Spirit who, do, who does it. Uh, so I, I thank God all for that. My name is Alor. I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm from Sudan. And I just met Philip Blair. I, I followed him on YouTube, you know, and to see him preach the gospel, I just came to preach the gospel with him, you know, I just came to proclaim the word of the God with him, you know. And it's good to have encouragement, like boldness, you know, I need boldness. More bold and seeing this is really encouraging. So I just got happy to do this. Yeah. My name is Philip Blair. I'm from America. I'm the director of Torch of Christ Ministries. You can look it up online. You can email me at torchofchrist at gmail.com. If you want answers, if you want help, if you want prayer, reach out to me. Come to us. We will pray with you. If you want to 
be saved and follow Jesus, come to us and we will pray with you. If we neglect such great love, what are we going to do? How can we neglect?